The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of Ron the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminas and Orient Invitation. Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Invitation. Television and also those watching on YouTube as well. A um, lot to look at this week on this week's episode. Obviously, the um, big stories. Um, football, of course, a shocking um, um, step down at Avondale. We're going to break that one down. Also, we're going to talk about what's wrong with Royal Oak. I mean, like, because I think Royal Oak reminds me a lot of the 2017-2018 Berkeley Bears. Um, their boys basketball team, of course, when they started off um, – you know, we're going to talk that, and also we're going to talk about what's been going on around the docket of boys, ba- boys and girls basketball this week. Um, let's go to our main story. Um, obviously, the main story um, has to be in football. Obviously, the um, resignation of Coach Corey Bell um, at Avondale. Um, this was a complete shock out of nowhere. Uh, it came out of nowhere. I mean, when you really look at the um, – you know, with, with um, what Corey Bell's done, I mean, he's led Avenue to four straight playoff appearance. I mean, like, in all his four years, they've been in the playoffs. I mean, he went on the Twitter, acknowledged that he was stepping down. Um, I want to read what he said um, on air here. He says, first, I want to thank all the administrators that believed in me, give me the opportunity to lead this program as a young head coach. Thank you to all the AHO staff, parents, the community members that, brought, that bought into our mission and helped grow this program. Secondly, I want to thank my staff. I could not think a greater group of individuals who gave everything they had to grow our culture and culture of players. You have all made tremendous impact on our players' lives and played a critical role in every success that we had. Lastly, and more importantly, I want to thank my players. Um, I love you all more than I love you all more than you know. Your dedication, commitment, this program and always be appreciated. The memories on this field with you will be something I cherish forever. Leaving is never easy, but I hope you can continue to push yourselves to be the best you can be. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Juan Avondale. He also thanked the parents as well. Um, also his assistant coaches as well. Um, but when I look at the resignation of stepping down, I mean, like, I I didn't expect this to happen because you look at what, Bell was, was doing. I mean, like, you know, he was on the verge of getting his team to a, um, they were the favorite in the goal this year. I mean, I think it, I mean, I still think they're going to be very good, but where does Avenue go from here and where does Bell go from here? I mean, you know, that's the big question. That's the big unknown. I mean, you know, for Coach Corey Bell, it's a big unknown. I mean, I don't know where he's going to be at. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes um, this offseason. Um, does he take a year off of coaching? I mean, does he, you know, so that's a big question. And where does Avenel go from here? I mean, you look at what Avenel's got. I mean, they got a good system. I mean, their offense is, I think, is going to be very good. You got a quarterback in Tyler Herzog. Um, You got a very good, um, you know, you got a very good, Two good wide receivers in Cooper Wolfery and Justin Sykes. Um, you got very good linemen in Dakir Takir, um, Charlie Killian, and Cameron Washington. Your defense is going to be very good next year, I think, with Miles Moore and Matthew Lloyd at linebacker, along with F- Alfonso Merritt in the defense secondary. I mean, there is some pieces here for whoever the new coach is over at Abno. Um, do they? Do I think they should they go within? You know, you look at successful coaches have gone within um it's worked out very well you look at of course you know with John Blackstock at Lake Orion um what he's done you know um being an assistant um he had a coaching job look what happened with the Dragons in 2019 um you look at obviously um you know you look at obviously um a lot of, I mean Justin Pintar Clarkson you know he was an assistant under coach under coach Kurt Richardson and he turned that in. Clarkson was a very good team. You look at obviously what West Bloomfield's done. I mean, you know, going from Ron Bellamy to um, you know, going from going to Ron Bellamy to Therese Grice. I mean, like you look at. I mean, like there's been a lot of success 
you know, going from from a um, you know, staying within house. And I really think with the Avondale here, um, I don't really see the reason why they shouldn't go in house. I mean, with their next coach, because I think with the Avondale is you got a sleeping giant there. You're one of the favorites in the gold this year. Yes, you're going to have a new coach. But if one thing that I've always learned is <laughs> when you change coaches, they want to bring in their own system. I don't think that's the case here at Avondale because you have a system that works. <laughs> you have to build success. And they have done that. <laughs> I mean... Avondale's a team that really, um, you know, you look at, of course, what Bell's done. Leading them to four playoff appearances. Yes, they've had to go through Birmingham for the rights, and that's not been easy. Um, they've had to, I mean, like, in, you know, they've been in Division Three. It's a good job. It really is. <laughs> and you look at the gold division when you look at coaching searches, when you look at new coaches, I mean, there's going to be three new coaches in this division. I mean, you got Pontiac still looking for a coach. <laughs> now you put Avondale in there. And then Royal Oak with, of course, Colin Campbell taking over. Um, I am very curious to see what happens there at Royal Oak with Colin Campbell taking over. But if I think Avondale, they have the players there. You just got to build program strength. You got to build the middle school component. Um, if they go outside the box here, it's got to be the right guy. Because if it's the wrong guy, then I think this program might go a step back. <laughs> I don't see it being the case with the Avenue. I think they, I think they can, if they keep somebody in house, I think it would make a lot of sense. Um, but that's the big question. Where do you go? You know, I mean, like, obviously, you know, Corey Bell is, of course, a nephew of Lake Orion, um, Dragon football coach and athletic director, Chris Bell. I mean, you really look at this team. I mean, you really look at Avondale next year. They got the makings of a very good team. I think they're going to be the favorite in the blue and the gold. I think they're going to be the favorite. Um, but they got to have the right guy in there. <clears throat> so I'm curious to see who is it going to be. Could they go within, which I think would be the best solution. Could they go, if they go outside the box, it's got to be the right guy. I mean, it's got to be the right guy. Um, but either way, I mean, you're still going to have a very good team. You have a quarterback. You have proven wide receivers. Good offensive line. Defense is solid. So you got players. It's just adjusting the system. That's going to be the key for Avondale. Because if they, it can, if they adjust very well, I think they're going to be a very good team. I mean, clearly when you look at the Yellow Jackets, um, it comes down to is, can they find stability? I mean, Corey Bell brought stability to that program. Yeah, he was there four years, but he, and the record wasn't the greatest under Bell. I think they were 15, they were 17 and 19 in his four years. But then again, they made the playoffs all four years he was there. So that kind of tells you something right there where Avondale was, you know? I mean, yes, I mean, they had Steve Deutsch at, at Caterier. Um, of course, Steve Deutsch, we know what he's done over there. We did over there. He did a really good job over there at Avondale. I mean, at Caterier, he did a nice job there. I mean, he did a good job there. But Corey Bell, what he did over there um, was remarkable. I mean, turning that program, you know, into a, he was getting really close there. And then this comes out of nowhere, stepping down. I mean, I didn't expect it. I don't think a lot of people in the media expected it. Um, That he would, he would depart Avondale. I mean, so there's going to be some challenges going around for Avondale coming up. There's going to be some challenges, but I really think the Yellow Jackets, they could find the right guy there. Um, I think they can turn this around real quick. I mean, I think that um, they can keep this thing going. They can really, really make some noise and keep this going. I mean, you got a quarterback. The only thing you got to find is a running game. I mean, 
I would love to see Avenue's offense go a little bit more balanced, uh, especially offensively. Um, and I think they can find that with the new coach. But other than that, I don't think they have to really change anything. They don't have to change offensively. They don't have to change defensively. I mean, they don't really have to change really almost anything. I mean, like, so we'll see. I mean, but that's going to be up for them. I mean, we're going to keep an eye on this situation over at Avondale. I mean, there are other jobs that are available. Obviously, Pontiac um, is one to really also look at, too. Um, and then, of course, Royal Oak, we talked last week uh, with Colin Campbell. I mean, like, I've got some concerns with the Ravens, but your chances in this division are really good. You know, whoever takes this job, I mean, I mean, obviously, you look at the division as is. Um, you know, I mean, Berkeley's going to be, I think Berkeley, I'm curious to see what they have next year. Um, could they be a threat? Um, could, um, I mean, Royal Oaks was really disappointing last year. Pontiac had a tough year. I mean, Ferndale's coming off a league title, barely getting the playoffs. Um, but they did lose a lot of talent. Um, so whoever takes this job, I think it's going to be in line to have a really nice year in the short term. Question for me with them is going to be long term is how are they going to be long term? You know, when you look at, when you look at a course building this program, I mean, it's a great area. I mean, Auburn Hills, Avondale, it's a great area. I mean, you're basically playing, you know, at a legendary field, you have a, um, you know, and then you and then you're playing. You, you get this. You get to hear I seventy five. I mean, like you know, you know. So that is a really. It's a good. It's a good place to coach if you um, if any well if any coaches are interested in coaching that team. I mean, that program. I mean, Avondale's got a good program. Um, I would like them to have a freshman program. I mean, yeah, they got two teams right now, but I would like for them to have three. But that comes down with numbers. I mean, obviously, you know, Avondale, you know, their enrollment, enrollment's decent, but I think when you look at Avondale, um, you know, but it's a great area, great area, kids, um, school in Waukegan, great, great residential area. You got Avondale Middle School right next to, right next to Avondale. Um, I, I it's going to be, I think it's a good job. Whoever gets that job, um, I, I mean, like, I think it's, it's a great job to have. So we'll keep an eye on the situation here at Avondale. Um, but, you know, just a shock out of, I came out of nowhere with Corey Bell stepping down at Avondale. Just didn't expect that to occur. Um, you know, of course, now you look at, of course, football coaching vacancies right now. It, then the league, obviously, now you got Avondale. Um, Pontiac, of course, is another one that is still vacant right now. Um, have not heard anything from the Phoenix regarding their football coaching search. Um, <laughs> so I'm very, very curious to see how um this will go when it comes to Avondale. I'm going forward there. So really, really, when you look at it here, I mean, like, that is something to really, really look at going forward there. Um, let's go now from football to basketball. Um, obviously, um, you're looking at a, um, you know, we got to talk boys basketball first. I mean, like, because I've really got to get this out of my head. I mean, like, when I'm looking at teams, and clearly this is a team that I think is in some serious, serious trouble. And I wrote my top five this week, and I think, I think if there's one team that is in some serious, serious trouble, it's the Royal Oak Ravens. And... I've watched at least three of their games. Um, they came off on fire. I mean, they were off to a 5-0 start, um, just beating everybody. Um, their closest win at that time was a nine-point win against Ferndale University. Now, Ferndale University is a better team, though, this year. I mean, I like what Coach Josh Nix has done. But still, I mean, like, you know, but, um, but Royal Oak, you know, they made the jump up from the gold winning it last year. Now they're in the blue. Um, you thought, okay, you know, and then you have that five and all start. Then you got people talking about you. Um, obviously play of, um, Camden Clark, um, both Hoffman brothers, of course, um, 
Dylan Hoppman became Roy Oak's all-time leading scorer. Um, Nick Hoppman's been solid. Um, Davis Arbiter, we know he can shoot the three ball. Um, and then, of course, you had, um, you know, I mean, like, you look at this team and you said, okay, you're 5-0, and oh, but then you haven't played any. But they haven't really played anybody. They haven't really been tested until they got into January. I mean, when you get into January, you know, that's when you really got to pick things up. And they have not delivered. I mean, it's clear. I mean, you look at the games against, you know, I'm going to look at, of course, their January has been just, a, it's been a complete disaster. I mean, this team's been 2-6 and six since. I mean, like, you look at, of course, the problems that Royal Oak faces, and it's pretty simple what the problems they face. I mean, they are not a big team. They're not, they don't defense the rebound very well. And, I mean, like, so they got to rely on the fundamentals. And there's been times they really haven't done that. And mentally, it's up here with them. It really is. So when I look at Royal Oak, they kind of remind me a little bit of the 2017-2018 Berkeley Bears. And the reason why I say this is because Berkeley had a 10-0 start. And then they went downhill after, after um, the new year started. I mean, they went from 10-0 to to um 10 and 11. I mean that that is very I mean that's tough. I mean that's really difficult. And then when you look at Royal Oak now, you know, you're 2 and 6. Um you really haven't played, you know, the caliber D1 teams um especially early. I mean, you played back in November December, you only played one. And I think that was Frazier. Um but and then, of course, the other problem they have is they've given up, they've given up, they've had um, opposing star players go off on them. I mean, DJ Morrill has had a big game against them. Jake Champagne's had a big game against them. Timmy Runkovich, Trey Walker has had a big game against them. And even um, Anthony Simpkins and Bowen Moore. I mean, they both have had big games against them. I mean, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, it's hard to explain what this team has gone from. I mean, you mean, you're talking 5-0 and early. Maybe they could be a surprise in the blue. And then now you're looking at a possibility of, you still got to play a tough schedule behind them. Um, and then your district is absolutely brutal. I mean, you got to look at, and, I, and if I'm Coach Aaron Smith, this is driving me insane. It has to. Because... You know, now, you know what I mean? You got to look at your team and say, okay, mentally, where are we at mentally? I mean, we haven't looked very good against some good teams. You rely on three-point shooting. I mean, like, sometimes, you know, that does help, but it also hurts you when you're a team that relies on their three-point shooting. But then when you, ha when you have to play teams that play really good defensively, this is where Roy Oak has problems. Um... You know, when you when they play teams that literally play good defense against against you. And you look at all those teams that they lost to, I mean, like they played literally good defense against you. In the Seahole game, I mean, like they I mean, Seahole won that one forty three thirty two. I mean, they shut down Royal Oak held them to thirty two points. And you look at of course you have Wilson who can shoot it, you have both Hopmans can shoot it, you have Clark who can shoot it. I mean, Arbiter can shoot it. I mean, like, you know, but to hold that team at 30, to hold this team at 32 points after they were averaging over 60 points to start of November, December, that tells you something right there. Um, Lake Orion held them to 38. I mean, I mean, Holly, in the Holly game, you know, um, they get, um, Holly game, Royal scored 63 points, but they gave up 76. I mean, and then, you know, and the, um, in the um against Stony Creek, of course, you know that one that was fifty eight fifty four in favor of Stony Creek, and Stony Creek was coming that game winless. So, what I'm trying to say here about Royal Oak is something's amiss here in describing this program because I don't know if it was cockiness. <laughs> I don't know if it was maybe you know because we got. Because you're up to a 5-0 start. You're rolling people. And then all of a sudden, like, the wheels fell off. And 
I think, you know, realizing playing in the gold to playing in the blue, it's a different animal. Because when you look at playing in the gold last year, you had to deal with Harper Woods. I mean, you had Avenel who was improving. Um, Pontiac we really struggled last year. Um, and Ferdinand University was a up-and-coming team. So I thought Royal Oak would have been able to make the move up. But to me, it looks like, you know, they really haven't been able to, you know, it's all up here mentally with them. And I think, you know, clearly when they got up that 5-0 and start, they said, okay, this style would work. I mean, this would be, you know, that we can win with this style. And then all of a sudden, when, you're, when you look at that month of January, you know, that's really bad where they've really fallen off, especially against teams that play them. Um, actual defense and have star players who've absolutely tortured Royal Oak. I mean, I mean, that's the problem that coach Aaron Smith faces. And, you know, I'm not sure if it's, you know what I mean? For Royal Oak, this team's in some serious trouble. And the reason why I say this, it's pretty simple because you look at the schedule, you still have to play everybody in the blue one more time. And then, you have that district. That district is brutal at Berkeley. <laughs> you got UD Jesuit in there. You got Detroit Renaissance in there. You got Oak Park's in there. You got Berkeley's in there. And not to mention Detroit Mumford. But I think when you look at that district, four of those teams out of those six teams, I think have a great shot to win that district. And let's not forget you lost your arch rival on your home floor. And you look at, of course, that game last year with Berkeley. And I know Royal Oak won that game last year. And I heard they did some shenanigans after that. And I know Berkeley, I watched that game again. I know that Berkeley did against Royal Oak when they stopped on that Raven. Um, you know, I... I, it's, 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 it's tough, but when you look at this game and you look at that match coming up at Berkeley, you know, if you're Royal Oak, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be the ones that have to go in there, you know, and beat them. I mean, like that's going to be a very tall order. Um, speaking of the rest of the blue, I mean, you got to look at, you know, just talking besides Royal Oak, you look at that blue, the blue is wide open this year. It really is. I mean, Royal Oak, they still have a chance, but they got to do a lot. They got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of work ahead of them. Um, so there is a chance, but it's a, it's a tall order for them. But they've really got to get that mental state fixed. They've really got to get their, um, they got a defensive rebound better. I mean, they got to get their, they got to get what got them to the party, um, which was their three point shooting, you know, at least, at least get some good shots. Don't be, um, don't create any bad shots. I mean, like, you know, because that's where your problem is. If you're Royal Oak right now, I mean, you just, you haven't been able to put your style of play in this month of January. Um, hopefully for a better month in February. Um, you know, because if you're going to March and you're struggling, you might be done right away early. Um, speaking of the blue, I mean, the blue division in boys basketball is probably the most unique division in, right now. I mean, everybody looks at the red and the white. They're both juggernauts. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at the white division. Obviously, that is a juggernaut. Um, but the blue division looked very manageable. I mean, you look at Berkeley right now stands on top at four and one. They had a really tough loss to Stony Creek in overtime, but I still think out of the seven teams in that division, I still think Berkeley's the best team because of Tamir Rukovic and Jacob Sharif. I mean, I did say Stony Creek before the season started. I still think they're going to make a run. I mean, Peyton Rumbler is still not back yet for this team. You got Jake Fulkerson. You got Aiden Grosko. You got um, you got Trey Walker on that team. 
They just haven't been able to figure it out under Coach Jeff Owen. And they got to play hand tramic next. I'm going like, what are you doing? I mean, like, it's a tough slate for Stoney. <laughs> I mean, you've already played Macomb, Dakota. I mean, you played Thurley Heights, Stevenson. You still got to play Adams, Rochester. You got Rochester twice. You got to play Clarkston. I mean, like, man, that's a difficult road for the Cougars. really is. Um, but Stony Creek is a sleeper. Yeah, they're two games back of the, of the loss column, but I think Stony Creek could be a team that could, I don't think anybody wants to see. Um, another team that's been rolling right now has been Seal. You look at what the Maples have been doing. I mean, early in the year, they had it rough. And then once they started getting healthier, <laughs> they started to roll. They're near 500 right now. They're playing good basketball. And the fact they're one game behind Berkeley right now and they still got to play them, it'll be really interesting between the Bears and the um, Maples. It really would be. And I know Berkeley still got to play Oxford, and Oxford's a game back in that division. But Oxford hasn't been the same team since the Lake Orion game. Really haven't. I mean, Jake Champagne, I mean, he's had some good games, obviously. I mean, he had a big one against Emily City. And then he had a big one against, um, he had a big one against Roy Oak the other night. <laughs> and then Troy Athens. When you look at that matchup, I mean, the Red Hawks, I mean, you clearly look at that game. And Troy Athens, I mean, like, um, have been hot and cold lately. They've been hot, have been up and down lately. Rochester's been up and down as well. And then you look at, um, and then there's Royal Oak. We already talked Royal Oak already. Why well, I think they're in some serious trouble. So when I look at that division right now, I still think Berkeley's the team to beat in that division. I really do. I mean, yeah, they had that tough loss to Stony Creek. I mean, like, they still got to go to Stony Creek. Um, but I think the play if Berkeley can win their division, that'd be the first division wild division title in a long, long time. And that says something there. If you're coach George Thermal. But right now, if Berkeley Berkeley controls their own destiny right now. They really do in this division. Um on the um on the white side, the white's a mess. I mean the white is an absolute mess. I mean Troy right now leads the division. Um Troy I mean like um Bloomfield Hills um, Groves, West Bloomfield, and Farmington all have one win each. And then Lake Orion is 0-2 right now in this division. Lake Orion 6-5. and five. And they played a tough schedule. I mean, they have played some really good teams. I mean, they played Warren D. LaSalle tough. I mean, there was one stretch they lost three games by combined seven points. That says something. That tells you how good Lake Orion is. Um, and then they had that fourth quarter collapse against Groves. I mean, where a fishing was absolutely atrocious in the fourth quarter. Just atrocious. Um, and then you look at West Bloomfield. I mean, obviously with them, I mean, they've been, they've been up and down. I mean, like they had some good moments where they looked good against Groves. And then they had that Harper Wood screw job against them. Then they lost to Farmington. And then they bounced back against Detroit, a good Detroit Henry Ford team and beat them. So West Bloomfield, we don't know what Laker team's showing up. Is it good West Bloomfield or is it bad West Bloomfield? That's the big question. <laughs> but, you know, they've been, they've been very inconsistent. Um, and then you look at Groves. I mean, Groves coming off that win against Lake Orion and then, you know, bouncing back after a tough loss to um, a really tough loss to um, West Bloomfield. I mean, Troy right now controls their destiny. They're 2-0. Oh. I mean, in the division, they're 2-0. Oh. Big win against Moonby Hills. Says a lot. They also beat Farmington. Um, Farmington is 1-1 one one as well. I mean, they beat um, they beat West Bloomfield, but, you know, but, um, I mean, like, but they lost to Troy. So, you know, really interesting to see how this division is going to work out. I mean, like, I'll tell you what. Whoever wins this division is going to have at least three losses. That's clear as, clear as day. 
Um, but we'll see what happens in that division. The red division, you know, North Farmington, Ferndale's been red hot right now. I mean, they're five and six. Um, I think with the Eagles right now, with the way that they're playing, um, they could be coming back a little bit. That could be a good sign for Coach Juan Rickman and his team. It could be a really good sign. Um, then you have, at, you have Oak Park. Oak Park's been rolling lately since their loss to um, North Farmington. Um, good wins against Westfield Prep and Adams. Um, starting to turn things around again. Geo Hutchins has been playing really well for Oak Park. Um, Clarkston, we know that they've been, um, they've been playing with fire lately. It's hard to believe Clarkson and Adams are both 0-2 and they play each other on Tuesday. Hard to believe. But that's the case. It'd be really interesting over at Clarkson. I can't believe somebody, a very good team in that division is going to be 0-3. I mean, that's how loaded that division is. I mean, I'll tell you what right now. All honesty, the red and the white are absolute juggernauts. They... I mean, you look at, of course, I know Goose Poops, I believe, was the, on Twitter, said put the white at six and then the red at two as the toughest divisions in the state of Michigan. That tells you something right there. That tells you how good those divisions are. Um, in the gold, um, Harper Woods right now, I think, is the clear, um, clear team in that division with the way they've been playing. They played a tough schedule as well. Avondale's right there with them. Um, Ferndale University has been playing good basketball up and down, um, as well. Um, it's hard for me to trust Southfield. I mean, Southfield's been playing better, which is a good sign for them. Um, and then there's Pontiac and Pontiac, we know they beat Bradford Academy, <laughs> but have really struggled. I mean, they've really been struggling as of late too, so. There's a lot to really look at with Pontiac. I mean, you know, I mean, like, I'm a little surprised they're still playing their games at um, Pontiac Kennedy. Um, not sure what's going on with Cy Green Jam over there. But, you know, it's a little, it's surprising that Pontiac is still playing their games at um, Pontiac Kennedy, which is really odd. Um, so I, I'll try to get, more information there why Pontiac's not playing their games at um at Pontiac High School and they're playing their games at Kennedy. I mean, considering, you know, they got the new football field there. Um, you know, the new stadium there at Pontiac. Um, I guess the basketball court maybe is going through some renovations. I don't know. I mean, but that is a that's really interesting to see what's been going on with them. So when I look at obviously the top twenty three for boys, you know, the top storylines I'm looking at this week. Um, obviously, we've already talked Royal Oak. Um, in fact, they're in deep trouble. Ferndale, are they for real? I mean, we don't know yet. If they can knock off North Farmington Tuesday, I think that'll really tell, give me an answer there. We've already talked the White. Harper Woods is the front runner, and the Blues wide open. I mean, <laughs> those are clearly what's been going on in this division right now. Um, let's go now from boys basketball. Let's bring up girls. Um, obviously, when you look at the girls' side of things, <laughs> I just I think it looks like the division titles look like they're pretty close getting wrapped up. And that is in all three divisions because <laughs> in the blue, Bloompia Hills is on the verge of winning their first um, league title, I think, in school history. And that says something right there. Um, what Coach Chris and Massey's done. Yes, they got to go to Farmington. That's a very tough trip for them. Um, but I really think that Bloompy Hills playing Stony Creek last week really has helped them. Um, they still got to play Birmingham Marion. I mean, like, on the non-conference slate. Um, but I've got to be really, I'm really pleased with Oak Park because here's why. Oak Park, la I mean, like, early on in the year, was absolutely atrocious. I mean, they haven't been, they weren't able to score, giving up a lot of points, <laughs> but it comes down to scoring with them. If Oak Park scores over 50 points, they win. They usually do win. And the bottom line is, um, with the Knights, is here's a team that they finally learned 
to win games, and they finally know how to score. That's a good sign. And that's a good sign not only heading into the rest of the regular season, but also heading in the postseason as well. But it also helps that, you know, there's some teams in that division that are just absolutely bad. I mean, you look at Pontiac. I mean, Pontiac, they have really struggled again um, to score. They've really struggled to defend people. Um, so that's been a struggle right there. And then unexpectedly, Ferndale University's been struggling. I mean, who would ever thought that the Eagles would be a team that coming into the year um, really not been the greatest, but but they're going through a very tough rebuild. And I know they're saying next year is going to be the year for the Eagles, and I need to see it to believe it. But for Coach Piano Row, it's been a tough transition right now. They're in a really tough spot right now. Um, Ferndale, you know, they've been up and down. I mean, Jada Buchanan has been playing well for them. Um, but they've got to start building that program. They can build that program. That's something to really look at going forward with them. Um, Avondale's been a mess. I mean, they've been a complete mess. And, yeah, they have that win against Pontiac, but this is a team that's still struggling to find any consistency. This is a team that's got some issues right now. Coach Roy Krishman, he's got some issues they've got to address. And I think they're a team that could be in some trouble come postseason time. Um, but really the two teams in this division to really watch for are Bloopy Hills and Farmington. Uh, Bloopy Hills, we've already talked about them. Farmington coming off that win against Oak Park where it was 55-50. Heck of a game there. I mean, I'll tell you what, Oak Park is better than people think. Gave Farmington everything can handle. If they can do that against Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like, and they still got to play Bloomfield Hills, I think, a couple times. Um, I really think they could turn things around quickly. So when I look at Bloomfield, when I look at Farm, when I look at Oak Park, Oak Park, they're going to be a scary team. But the problem with Oak Park, I think, is going to come postseason time when they're in a district with, oh, with, with, um, with um, Detroit Renaissance, Berkeley. Royal Oak, I mean, Royal Oak's been struggling as of late. Berkeley's been playing really good basketball. Detroit Renaissance undefeated right now. Um, Detroit Mumper, we know they're a tough team. Um, so, they're going to have their hands full, that's for sure. Really will be. Um, and then, let's go to the White. You know, when you look at the White, <laughs> North Farmington clearly leads the cream of the crop of that division. You look at the Raiders right now, and the Raiders right now are 14-0. They're on the verge of going 22-0. That has been one of their goals this year, was 22-0. And it looks like they're really close to getting there. <laughs> now, Coach Jeff Simpson needs to look at the future. You need to look at ahead of time because now you got to say, okay, 22-0 and 0 is really real right now. It really is. But you got to look at your district. You host the district. But there's one team in particular that could end it all, and that is Farm Tales Mercy. I really think this is Simpson's best ch chance at beating the Marlins and beating Coach Gary Morris. Because one, you're at home. Two, you got the players. You got Seller Leftwer. You got Penelope Crury. You got Eliza Muller. You got Sia Jihad. You have, I mean, you got, I mean, like, you got the players to do it. Now you got to go in there and do it. I mean, now you look at the division now. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, Oxford's still your toughest challenger, but they took a hit this week. With the injury, with the ACL injury to Nevaeh Wood, that's a big loss for Oxford. Now, when you look at Oxford's situation, now you look at a course with them. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, that schedule looks tough. But now you look at your district and say, okay, now your road against Grand Blank just got a lot tougher, because now you look at obviously you have Miranda Winemco, you have Peyton Richter, you have Sophia Rob and Allison Huffsetter. Okay, so. Your bench is going to really be tested. 
So if you're Brady Elling, you're Lexi Yankee, you're Avery Feeney, um, you got to be ready to step up. And, <laughs> and right now with Oxford, they're in a tough spot right now. They're, they're in a really difficult spot right now. But you've been here before. So that's what I would say to Rachel Breyer right now. You've been here before. Um, so bottom line is you got to go to North Farm. If you're Oxford and you're looking at your division hopes, you got to go in at, um, at, at North Farm. That's not an easy place to win. But now without Nevaeh Wood, that is, that makes it all that much harder. Um, and then your district, you know what I mean? You, that's going to be a lot harder now. Um, considering that, you know, everybody else in that district looks very winnable. You know, with Davison, Lapierre, Holly, um, I think that district looks very winnable. But now you got to deal with Grand Blank, and you know, Grand Blank's got two very good players in him, Jaden McCree and Chelsea Bishop. Um, it's going to be a tall, t tall order for them going forward in that in that district. Um, Harper Woods is hard to trust. Um, you know, they've had games that looked really good. And there's they have, they've had some games that looked really bad, and you know, it's hard for me to trust Harper Woods right now. Royal Oak is another team hard for me to trust with them right now. Um, yes, they, I know they had that injury to Lydia Dinkins. That's a big deal. Um, but they've been up and down a little bit. But if there's one team that I'm really high on right now that's starting to come back, that's starting to um, make a, make a um, perfect analogy, if you watch the movie, we're back at Dinosaur Store. And, you know, they were, uh, they were down in the dumps. And then they came back. That's the Berkeley Bears. And the reason why this team is come back is because of the play of Sammy Whitrow, The play of, you know, the play of um, Ava Beard. The play, uh, I mean, they got others as well that have really contributed as well. But I'll tell you what, I mean, like, they have finally gotten on the same page you know, and that tells me something right there. If in you've won six of the last seven games, your only loss was the Rochester. And we know how good they are. They are very good. They're an honorable mention team in the state, as is Lake Orion as well. Um, and West Blue, we know they're state ranked. North Farmington's also an honorable mention as well. Um <laughs> so with Berkeley. You know, let's not forget, this is the same team, you know, same program that knocked out Detroit Renaissance a year ago. So, Berkeley coming into the year, I thought, you know, they would play this type of basketball um, in the, um, you know, I, I mean, like, the way they're playing right now is what I expected they would play during the season. What they played early on was absolutely bad. I mean, they've had a lot of injuries. Yeah, Jillian Gomes has been hurt. But the way that they're playing right now, much better basketball. To me, clearly right now, I think they are the third best team in that division behind um, you know, behind North Farmington and Oxford. Um, I will be very curious to see how Berkeley and Oxford play um, over at Oxford. Um, this will be really interesting considering that you know what Nevaeh Wood done for the year. That I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be. Um, and then you look at Seaholm. Um, Seaholm's been up and down. You look at um <laughs> at Troy Athens. They've been up and down. Um, and then Adams we know been struggling this year. Um, so when you look at the White, um, honestly, you know with Troy Athens have been just Troy Athens has been up and down. I mean, Skylar Emerson, you know, is their best player. Abby Malone's had her moments of greatness. Um, I I just think with Athens, with Troy Athens, and when I look at the Red Hawks right now, I think they're still, when you look at the NPR right now, I think they're the number two seed right now, which is mind-boggling to me. Because you look at that district with Troy Athens, they're in a much, they're in a winnable district. I didn't expect how bad Utica's been. I mean, I didn't expect that to happen. I thought Utica would be better. But, you know, they're struggling. 
And then you look at, of course, Abinow. Abinow's been struggling. Um, so with Athens, obviously the team they got to worry about is Utica Ford. <laughs> we know how good Utica Ford is. They're not bad. I mean, they've played a tough schedule. Really have. Um, Adams has been very young this year. Um, they've taken their lumps. Uh, Morgan McPherson, we know, is their top player. I mean, they've got to get more um, production for their young crew if they're going to um, want to make some noise. Um, and then, of course, we've already, I mean, Seaholm, we know about them. Royal Oak, Harper Woods. Um, Berkeley, we've already talked Berkeley. Oxford, we know it. I'm curious to see how they do without Nevaeh Wood. Austin Randon, when Epco's got, has to step up. Allison Upsetter's got to step up. Peyton Richter's got to step up. Sophia Rod's got to step up. Um, really curious to see what direction they go with going forward with them. Um, and then you look at, um, and then North Farmington, obviously, is there an opportunity for them to lose? There is, but I just don't see it right now with them. I mean, considering they got, I mean, Berkeley could be their trap game, and that's on the road. Um, that could be probably their only trap game. Um, they haven't been to Harper Woods yet, so I'm very curious to see how um, Harper Woods, you know, how North does when they go down to Harper Woods. Um, and then you have, um, and then, of course, you have, um, so I think if, if there are two places where I think North Farmington could lose their first game, I think it's Berkeley. And I think Harper Woods. I mean, those are the two teams. Other than that, I see them going 22-0 and because I don't see Groves beating them. I mean, I really don't. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, when you look at the red, obviously, West Bloomfield, with the way they've been playing that juggernaut of team there. Um, I mean, they what they did to Lake Orion, beating them by 40 points, that was just impressive. Lake Orion really didn't stand a chance in that game. Really didn't. Um, Obviously, both Davis sisters, the Hendrick sisters, Destiny Washington, Ava Lord. Um, I mean, played really good games. I mean, they just shut Lake Orion down. Lake Orion really didn't have a chance. I mean, in that game. Now, Lake Orion did bounce back against Clarkston on Friday night. Um, Chloe Wiegers, Maddie Everett, both had big nights. Um, West Bloomfield had no issue with Groves at all. 83 to 30 was that score. I'm telling you, I think Groves is in trouble. I, I think they are. Because when you look at Groves right now with the way that they're playing, um, they lost 60-52 to Safi Darts and Tech. Um, and then they lost to West Bloomfield. Um, I think it's clear to me that I think Caitlin Sanders is doing too much. Sierra Rocco's also doing too much as well. I mean, you look at the comparison of Caitlin Sanders, Kevin Garnett for the Minnesota Timber when he played for the Minnesota Timberwolves is the perfect analogy for Caitlin Sanders. I mean, that's the perfect analogy for her because you look at, of course, her game is very similar to that of Kevin Garnett, really similar when he was with the Timberwolves. When Garnett had to carry the load, I remember that. You know, that was not a fun thing. Really wasn't. Um, but when I look at teams that are in some trouble right now, I think Groves is really in some trouble right now, seriously. Um, Troy's come, Troy's been struggling a little bit. Yes, their young crew has been up and down, obviously. Um, Diamond Prince, um, Reagan Zider. Um, they got a bright future ahead of them, though. I mean, a lot of people have been talking about Macy Zider. A lot of people have been talking about her with um, what she can do for Troy. And I think she's in line to do some great things, but she's only two years away, though. She's a seventh grader right now. Doing really good things right now for Troy um, in the middle schools over at Troy. So I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, Rochester has been playing some good basketball. Their style is usually a slow-paced game because of the Twin Towers inside with Alex Max and Kylie Robinson. Um, Natalie Race has had some games. Um, Abby Pleasants has some game, some good games. C.B. Norgroves has some good games. Um, for Coach Bill Thurston, obviously, you know, I will be very curious. They haven't played a lot of games in a while, so I'm curious to see how they respond 
going forward there. Um, Clarkston, when you look at the Wolves, um, you know, obviously, Ava Hernandez, um, Eliana Roback, you know, I mean, like, seeing her play, um, you know, yeah, she's a freshman, I get it, but, um, with Roback, I really, I really think that, um, you know, she's got a lot to learn still, I, I really do, um, but I'm curious to see how she does in the postseason, I mean, like, because, you know, postseason, I'm curious to see how she does. Um, but Ava Hernandez, I think it's the key for Clarkson. I really do. I mean, because her game, she's a solid player. Kira Tomi is a solid player as well. I mean, like, obviously, you know, I'm very curious to see how Clarkson does. Um, I mean, obviously, you got that collision course with Lake Orion looming in the district final likely is going to happen. I think it's inevitable it's going to happen. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. I mean, I think Lake Orion's been playing very good basketball despite the loss to West Bloomfield. Um, West Bloomfield is on another planet right now. Rochester, you know, they've been playing good basketball. Clarkson's been up and down. Stony Creek, I think, has been playing good basketball as well. Um, they're starting to roll a little bit. Obviously, the injury to Mia Carson still hurts them. Be curious to see if she comes back this week. Um, I know they got the Crosstown coming up with Rochester in a couple days, um, which I think it's going to be a really interesting game. Um, and I really think that'll be really interesting there. I mean, Groves have already talked about they're in some trouble. Um, Troy have already talked about, but Southfield's a funny team. Southfield Arts and Tech is a real funny team because when you look at the Warriors, they look, I mean, when I saw them against Belleville, they gave up 90 points. They were pressed all over the place. The play of Christian Banks and Cammy Page and Kamara Page are it's critical for them to have big games for Coach Akia Coltrane. I mean, it is absolutely critical for them. I mean, Jalen Austin, obviously we know what she she can bring. I mean, being part of that um that team what state final her freshman year under then coach Michelle Marshall. But with a and T, I I think the play of Banks and Page are going to be critical for them going forward. And could they be a spoiler come postseason time? Could they threaten a team like North Farmington or a Farmington Hills Mercy? Can they do that? I don't think they have the depth to do it, but they could be they could be a, a player. I mean, they gave North Farmington a scare. I mean, especially in that third quarter of their game when they played. Could they give that same thing to Farm Hills Mercy? Maybe. I mean, Farm Hills Mercy just lost the other night, I think, to Ann Arbor um Gabriel Richard. And you look at that team, the Marlins, they're they're gonna be they're solid. I mean, they're solid. So when you look at the red right now, I with the red right now, I still don't think anybody's gonna touch West Bloomfield considering the way they've been playing. Um and then but this battle for second is right now well underway right now. Between Lake Orion, um, Stony Creek, um, Clarkston, uh, and Rochester. I mean, those are, that's going to be really interesting to watch as we get in the month of February and then getting ready for the postseason, obviously, <laughs> where seedings are very important, um, especially in that district over at um, Rochester with them. Stony Creek and Utica Eisenhower right now. Utica Eisenhower right now has the two seed over Stony Creek, which means Stony Creek has to be either Lake Orion or Rochester, you know, just to, you know, get, get seeded and have Utica Eisenhower lose. And I'm curious to see how that's going to go. I'm really curious to see how that's going to go. But that's a district to really watch for. Um... But right now, when you look at the divisions right now, and all three divisions right now, um, they're pretty much locks. 
I mean, Bloompia Hills right now has a um, string holding the blue. They still got to go to Farmington, um, which would be very interesting, unless Bloompia Hills gets upset by somebody. But I don't really see that happening. Um, and then the white, you got North Farmington. I still think Oxford gives them the biggest problems, despite the fact they have no Nevada Wood. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, and then in the red, West Bloomfield obviously has a string hole in that division. Um, they look really primed um, <laughs> to have a division, to have a possible repeat of the state championship in Division One. I. Um, I will be very curious if there's a team in the west side of the state that can give them problems. I mean, last year, Rockford gave them everything it could handle in the Division One state semifinals. Um, but obviously, when I look at West Bloomfield, yes, Detroit Renaissance is the top team in the state of Michigan, but I'll tell you what, I mean, the real team, top team in the state of Michigan is West Bloomfield. And I think you got to learn something here from Rick Flair. And I think Coach Gerald McAllister would agree with me with this here. To be the man, you got to beat the man. And right now, Detroit Renaissance has has not played a caliber type team like West Bloomfield. Um, if those two teams were to play, I think West Bloomfield beats them because they got no answer for the Davis sisters. Um, I don't think Anaya Hardy guards Sidney Hendricks well. Um, I Nevaeh Otis and um, you know Christian and um, Christian Sanders. I don't think they match well with the Davis sisters at all. Um, I think Ava Lord's a wild card in that game if those two teams were to play. Um, but you never know. I mean, <clears throat> with Detroit Renaissance, um, with Detroit Renaissance, they're gonna have to deal with Berkeley in that district. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, so my final thoughts of the week, obviously, um. Keep it on the situations at Avondale and Pontiac. <laughs> Apologize for this some cough today. Um, you know, I mean, like it's been um, the weather's been kind of rough, so you know, so we'll see what happens there going forward. There, all right, I'm gonna sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second of eight forty six fifty at boxspot.com for the latest information, and we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm gonna sign off here. It's the same thing here. Signing off, take care, God bless, and I'll be on it for a few minutes.